Hey guys, so I want to go over water heaters with you and what I would like to do is go over a couple different types of water heaters but I also just want to go over how to know if your water heater has been installed properly, how to know if it's functioning properly, and if there are any safety issues, and then also some things that you can do to prolong the life of the water heater. But most people have these gas or propane water heaters uh, that have tanks. It's kind of the standard. Uh, there's a couple different types. There's one like this one, which is a natural draft, which we'll talk about. And then there is high efficiency, which is a sealed uh, exhaust and puts it out to the exterior. Uh, it's a 90% efficient or better. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about those as well. So let's get into it. And uh, we're going to start with a couple safety things. Okay, so on your standard gas or propane water heater, uh, there's a tank. And what's going on inside of here is from about here down you have a burner compartment and you can take this off and you can take a look. There's a little viewing window that you can see that it's functioning properly. You can get a look in there and make sure that it's nice and clean. Uh, one of the things you wanna make sure is that there's no sediment or rust piled up on top of that burner. You want that to be nice and clean to make sure that the fuel is burning cleanly. It's getting good oxygen to it. Another thing is these vents. So these vents down here are actually very important. That is what's allowing the combustion air to enter into the system. You wanna make sure that those are not blocked. No boxes, no bags or anything put up against them, pile of clothes, anything like that. You gotta make sure those vents stay clear. If they're not clear, it's not gonna draft properly and it could damage the unit. It could also produce carbon monoxide. Uh, you could have some other issues going on there. So make sure those screens stay open. All right, moving up. This is our setting right now. I just moved it to very hot. If you move it to very hot and you go upstairs and you turn on a faucet just hot, it could potentially burn you. So you wanna keep this down, usually between A and B or hot. Uh, as low as you feel as comfortable is best. So another safety thing that you wanna make sure is that when these are installed, this should really be rigid pipe, hard pipe, all the way in. Now there's some differing opinions on whether it has to be the black gas pipe or it can be galvanized. There's some situations where that galvanized will deteriorate a lot quicker. I would use the black pipe. Um, someone says, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. For the cost difference, it's not that much. Just go ahead and use the black pipe. But we don't want any flexible connection of the pipe for the gas supply in here because it can get knocked around. Um, a lot of those are pretty thin. And if they're in a traffic area where you're putting a mop bucket in from time to time, removing a vacuum cleaner or whatnot, it getting hit a lot, it could leak. And if that leak's not detected, you're out of town, all of a sudden furnace kicks on, there's a gas leak. That's when you see houses get leveled, completely blown up because they're blowing up from the basement. Um, and that's where the gas leak was. So you wanna make sure that you have a rigid line that is connected to that. That is not a very big job to do. So if you do have a flexible line, I would recommend talking to a plumber, have them come out and put that rigid line in. We should have these dielectric unions if it's connected to copper because our galvanized piping here, if it connects directly to copper, can cause corrosion and deterioration of both the copper and the stubs on the water heater. I've seen water heaters that didn't have these dielectric unions uh, installed and literally the top of this thing went rusted out in less than a year and a half. So you wanna make sure that these dielectric unions are installed. Uh, some people will say, oh, you only have to put it on once. Just put them on both sides. It's the best way to do it. You also wanna make sure that you do not have any plastic or poly connections within 18 inches of the connection on here to make sure that a couple things, this flue can get hot, but also the water coming out, we just, that's the code, we, within 18 inches, it needs to be rigid piping. Uh, another thing that you wanna make sure is that down here, our cover is in place. You wanna make sure that if there's any insulation that was intended to be there, that insulation is there. You wanna make sure that any doors Sometimes when you open these up, the older ones, they'll have a door that slides open and closed. That needs to be in place. All right, another thing that should be there on the gas line. Where the gas line comes down, there should be what's called a dirt leg. 
That dirt leg is just that. It collects any dirt, moisture, anything that comes down in that line, goes into this and is stored there. It takes a really, really long time to fill it all the way up. That's called a dirt leg. This one, we actually have one on both, which is nice. All right, we also need a shutoff for the gas for each component. So the water heater should have its own shutoff. The furnace should have its own shutoff. Dryer, any basically gas appliance should have its own shutoff within reach and in line. It's also very common that these unions here, which are not dielectric union, uh, sometimes these guys will leak and when they're not tight enough. There is some material you can get, some liquid that you can get to drop on there and it will detect leaks by changing color. You can also use some soapy water. Uh, you can also do the smell test, but you wanna make sure that from time to time, you're just kind of putting your nose down there and making sure there's no leaks on any of this. All right, so moving up from that vent, we have this little guy. This is a temperature and pressure relief valve. This is designed to relieve pressure or high temperature if the pressure in this tank gets too high. And that's good because what we don't want to do is overpressure this thing and blow it up. Back in the day when boilers were used more readily and they were more um, commonly used, there were boiler explosions and a lot of these things uh, were as a result of that, these pressure and temperature relief valves. So on your water heater, you wanna make sure that this pressure temperature relief valve has a pipe that goes within six inches of the floor. And you wanna make sure it's not PVC. If you go to any of the big box stores, they put them made out of PVC, which is not good because if we have 120, 130, 140 degree water hitting this thing, it's gonna bend it. And if it's high pressure, it's gonna be flailing all over the place. Uh, so what we want for this is we want metal. Copper is best, uh, galvanized would be okay because this is not a copper fitting. You could put galvanized in there without having too much of an issue. So if you ever come down and you see water on the floor where this temperature and pressure relief discharge pipe goes to, you wanna check out what's going on. It means that it's either over temperature, over pressure, or this little unit right here could just be bad. There's a spring in there that's temperature and pressure allows the water out, and if that spring has gone bad, it could start letting it leak. But if you see anything down here, go ahead and call someone in and get it checked out and find out what needs to happen and why it is leaking. Any water near the floor on a water heater, just get it checked out. Um, you know, I've seen people like, oh, it's been leaking like that for months. Don't do that, because if you do that and that little leak turns into something big and you're not home when it does, you're gonna flood your whole basement because that's a lot of water coming through here. All right, so another thing moving up is our ductwork. You want to make a, take a look at your ductwork, and you want to make sure of a couple things. You want to make sure that as it goes up, the ducting plugs inside of the one above it. So as it goes up, this one goes inside of that one. The next one goes inside all the way through. If it's flipped around the other way, if they get it wrong, what can happen is the exhaust can actually gas out of these seams. One of the things I really like to do, you can see on this furnace over here, is get this high temperature aluminized tape and just tape all those joints up. That way you know for sure you're not gonna get any outgassing. Another thing that's really important safety is make sure that your connection to your chimney is in good condition. We also wanna make sure that we don't have a negative slope where it comes up and then goes down. I've seen some where they come up and they actually drop way down. What that's gonna do is it's gonna stack a bunch of exhaust up here and if it's not gonna draft properly. Basically, these water heaters are natural draft, so the heat rising is what pulls the rest of it out. And if we have a space where it goes down, it's not gonna draft properly. Gets into that chimney, it's not moving fast enough, it gets halfway up, cools off, and falls back down. And then if your chimney is not sealed up, then you can get carbon monoxide backing into the house. So make sure that your connection to your chimney is in good condition. All right, so one other thing I wanna do is show you guys how to test the draft of your water heater to make sure that the air is being pulled into here instead of coming out. So let me grab something here real quick and I'll show you. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is just take a basic match. I'm gonna light that match while this thing is running and I'm gonna hold that flame there and I'm gonna watch it to make sure that it's pulling the flame in. You can even blow it out and make sure the smoke is getting pulled into 
that opening instead of it getting pushed out. Now it's important that when you do this, you want to do this test with everything running that's connected to this flue. We should only have no more than oh, the water heater and possibly a furnace. This is a high efficiency furnace, so we don't have to worry about it because it's not connected to the chimney. But if you had a furnace that this flue here was connected to the flue that was coming from the furnace, you wanna make sure the furnace is running too because sometimes what will happen is the exhaust coming from the furnace, which is powered, gets pushed back into this and it comes down and it kicks it out into the house. So we wanna make sure that our draft is proper, that it is drafting up through. This is something that is potentially deadly. If your water heater is not burning cleanly and it's not drafting properly, it can put that carbon monoxide into the house. And that is, uh, the th that's the thing that kills people overnight in their sleep and they don't know it. So if you do have a natural draft water heater, I recommend having a carbon monoxide detector in the vicinity. You want your carbon monoxide detector to be down low, closer to the floor, because that is where the carbon monoxide naturally is gonna settle in the atmosphere once it hits room temperature. Okay, we also wanna make sure that there is a shutoff on the supply side of the copper or the galvanized line coming in. <clears throat> because if the bottom of this thing rips out or it develops a significant leak or this rusts out, starts leaking all over the floor, if you don't have a shutoff here, that water's just gonna keep running. You got no way to shut it off. Uh, you have to go shut it off at, the, at another location at the meter or out at the street, depending on your setup. So you want to make sure that there is a shut off here. If you come down, you're like, oh my God, it's leaking all over the place. So you can just reach up, turn that shut it off. Then this is going to leak out, um, but at least it's not going to flood a basement because you have a shut off here and you don't have to figure out another way. Okay, so let's talk about a couple things you can do to service the water heater. And one of those things is also something that you can do to take away a foul odor if you have well water. It will shorten the life of your water heater, but it gets rid of that bad sulfur smell. And that's the anode rod. So the anode rod usually sits in a little spot back here, and it's kind of hard to see that, but that basically is a uh, nut, and it on that is an anode that goes down. It's usually in maybe one, two, three pieces, and it's sacrificial metal. So it deteriorates so the rest of the tank does not. Well, if it's sacrificial and it deteriorates and it's designed to deteriorate, that means that once it does deteriorate, you need to replace it. Usually within two or four years of a new water heater, you're going to want to replace that anode rod. And then usually about every two, three years afterwards, depending on the condition of your water and how much that anode rod needs to be used. I've seen some that they don't hardly deteriorate at all over the entire life of the water heater. I've seen some that go bad in two years. So... If you want to service it, extend the life of your water heater. That anode rod is not that expensive. You can get those and put that in. You just got to make sure you shut the water off and drain the system. Then you can put that in. Speaking of draining the system, another thing that you should do is you should drain your water heater annually or every two years. You basically shut the water off at the top, hook up a hose that goes into a drain or a sump pump, open this thing up and let it all flush out. You flush all that water out, then while that's open, turn the supply on to let it spray some water down in there, stir things up, and get uh, the rest of that water out. What it's going to do is it's going to clear it of any sediment. If you ever go into your water heater and you sounds like it's boiling or popping, it's pop, 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 that's because there's sediment in the bottom of it, and it, the, the metal is getting so hot that when water finally does touch it, it's almost boiling it. It's popping and it's going through it. So you want to make sure that you do flush these tanks, especially if you're in a situation where you have uh, well water or you have water that's maybe not the greatest uh, hard water. You want to make sure that you flush the systems out and that's going to keep your water heater in good condition. Okay, so this is a natural draft water heater. If this was a high efficiency water heater or a powered vent water heater, you would have a little unit on the top of this that is a motor, it's all sealed up, and then basically it is pulling that draft air up through and kicking it out. Normally those are going to be on a PVC instead of the metal, and that's because they reclaim more of the heat. Uh, so the heat coming out of the exhaust at that point, uh, because it pulls more of the heat into the water, is only 100, maybe 110 degrees, and it pushes that out. So it's cooler, and you can use PVC similar to how this furnace is done. 
So with the high efficiency ones, sometimes you'll also have uh, an intake. So the combustion air will actually have another PVC that's pulling air from the outside in. Now, where that's important is if you have this in an enclosed space, if you have this in a closet and the closet is sealed off or a room is sealed off, you need draft air. So with a high efficiency that's pulling it from the outside, it's okay, you can seal it up. Uh, but with these ones, you can't have this in a closet that doesn't have makeup air. Also, your water heater should not be in a closet connected to a bedroom. That's a bad deal because if you get any of that exhaust leaking in and it's in a bedroom, if you don't have good carbon monoxide detectors or they don't work, you're going to get uh, carbon monoxide exposure and there's no level of exposure to carbon monoxide that is good. Uh, so make sure that it's installed in the proper place. So that's the basics on gas-fired water heaters. Obviously, this is not comprehensive. This is not all-encompassing, not all the information. Uh, if you have any question about this stuff, if you're not totally sure on what you're doing, the best thing to do is just have a licensed qualified plumber come in and have them take a look at it. If any of these components are not correct and you're not sure, you know, maybe I could watch a YouTube video on how to do it. A better way to do it is have a plumber come in and, and watch them do it and have them explain what they're doing. A lot of these guys will do that with you. They'll let you watch and they'll explain what's going on. Um, but have a plumber come in and do it. Have them take care of it because that way you know what's right and you're not going to have any issues. Some of the simple things like flushing the system, that's something that you can do. Relighting a pilot light, that's something that you can handle. Um, you know, but when it comes to the bigger items, just have a plumber come in. So hopefully this helps you guys. It gives you kind of a base to start with. You can get a checkup on your unit. You can kind of take a look and make sure does everything look like it's sound or not. If it's not, call someone and have them take a look at it. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.